S O, so random statement O. Um, this linked premise cluster leads to some random statement. The arguments converge on a given uh, a given point, right? So um, evidence for the existence of uh, evidence for the existence of the Great Pumpkin comes from two different directions. Evidence for the existence of the Great Pumpkin comes from two different sections. And now I wish I had the book because I it wouldn't. No, that can't be right. It can't be P. Oh my god, I wish I had that book. I put 20 bucks on it that I messed up. Bastard, Jason. Bastard. Um, I have P. The, the problem that I'm having, the problem that I'm having is I think I copied it wrong, the image down, wrong in the book. And what I'll do is I'll leave this blank now. Uh, and then I'll I'll go back and I'll update this by the time the video uploads, but I'm almost positive. Unless the author put SP as a different statement, it should be it should be the same one in the same statement, right? I my the problem that I'm having right now, um, you won't see this unless you've already printed out you've already printed out the notes. By the time I get home, or, or unless this is actually right, the the difficulty that I'm having is that. The, um, the initial um, uh, linked premise cluster leads to SO, and the second linked premise cluster leads to SP. But the whole idea is that you have two different lines of attack on the same point, so it should either be SO or SP, unless I didn't, and I'm almost positive, I'm almost positive it should just be SO here. I'm thinking it should just be, meaning that it leads to exactly the same conclusion and not two separate conclusions, but um, I'll go back home and and, uh, and look through the book. I'm 99.999% sure that it shouldn't be um, different state statements at the bottom, right? It shouldn't be like statement one and statement two, SO and SP, as I have here. I think what I did is I looked at it in the book, I saw it, and I sort of not thinking probably put a different statement. Um, but I'll I'll check that. The idea and the reason why I'm almost positive that what I have here is wrong is because we're using two different lines of attack to arrive at the same, right? To arrive at the same conclusion, not a different conclusion. So I'll check that. It might be a minor slip up on my part in uh, in bringing this over. I'll check. But by the time by the time the video is actually up, by the time you're watching this now, it'll be corrected. So whatever's here is correct. Now, if <laughs> now I'm doing real life sort of critical thinking. If it is the case that this is right, then, uh, it, 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 I mean, it can't be right. It can't be right. So, so yeah, I'll probably put a note up or something once the video pops up and I make sense out of all of this. But it, what I have on my, on my notes right now, and if you've already printed out the notes from previous sections, then what you might have is um, S subscript O, S subscript pre, P, but they're not converging. Just like here, we want it to converge to the same point. Okay. So, anyway could be a slip up in sort of bringing this over. Um, evidence for the existence of the Great Pumpkin comes from two different directions, right? Evidence for this one thing, the existence of the Great Pumpkin, comes from two different directions. What are these directions? First, second, right? When you have these first, second arguments, right? First, this happens. Then 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 this happens. We arrive at one point. That's a converging argument. I use converging arguments all the time. All the time. Right, so you want to arrive at one in the same, one in the same point. And I should have bought the damn book. You want to arrive at one in the same point, um, which I'm going to say is S O. But we'll see. Um, so evidence for the existence of the Great Pumpkin comes from two different directions. First, there is an undeniable um, unanimity of, uh, of the testimony of small children. One testimony is unanimous. One testimony is unanimous is very convincing, right? The testimony is unanimous, it is very convincing. Second, fossils reveal pumpkin seeds the size of tennis shoes. The only way to account for such mammoth seeds is to postulate the existence of the great pumpkin. So, unanimous testimony is very convincing, right? And we have the unanimous testimony of young children saying that the great pumpkin exists, therefore that's very convincing, one line of argument for the existence of the Great Pumpkin. Other line of argument is 
look how big these seeds are. You can't have seeds this big without there being something big enough to produce seeds this big. Therefore, that's another line of reasoning arriving at the same conclusion, right? So the conclusion the Great Pumpkin exists is justified by two converging arguments. One arguing that unanimous testimony is very persuasive, very convincing. The other sort of scientifically, empirically arguing, look how big these seeds are. Therefore, we both arrive at these same conclusions, right? Um, so, number one is, I'm not going to draw this out either, uh, the Great Pumpkin exists, which is one, and then we use two different sets of claims to justify that, right? We, use, we have two separate linked premise clusters. We have the first linked premise cluster, cluster two and three. Small children are unanimous in their testimony about the Great Pumpkin, and um, unanimous testimony is especially convincing. That leads to evidence for the Great Pumpkin. And then the next one, four and five, fossils um, reveal giant pumpkin seeds, and postulating the existence of the Great Pumpkin is the only way to explain those really big seeds. Right? Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. I think it should be pretty clear. The only thing that I really need to check on is this, and I'm almost positive that I just sort of, um, in looking in the notes, I didn't translate it properly um, here. But the idea is the same, right? We have a linked premise, we have a linked premise cluster that leads to some conclusion, uh, and I have to put something up here because it's going to drive me crazy. Um, some conclusion X, and something different that leads to some conclusion X. I'm almost positive it has to be, it's either S. SO or SP, but it, uh, I can't see it being both SO and SP because that would just be off. So it, it's probably, I just didn't look at the information crazy. And it's really driving me crazy because I like my lectures to be perfect. I don't like errors in my lecture, but you know, we're human beings, crap happens. I think it's pretty simple. Diverging argument. Um, remember the example that we gave about European currencies? To, you know, the American dollar is good. In Europe, it's strong with respect to the European currency. That's good because we can get a lot of bargain when they bring European goods over. We can buy it for really cheap in the U.S. However, um, when we are selling our products in the U.S., we're going to be at a competitive disadvantage because um, it, their currency is going to be buying goods at the rates that they're accustomed to. Right? So that's that. Parallel argumentation is the next. You have a premise cluster length that leads to um, a conclusion. The example was um, I did really bad. No, I'm going to fail physics. I'm going to pass chem. The reason why I'm going to fail physics is because I got D's and F's. The reason why I'm going to pass chem is because I got A's and B's, parallel structure. Okay? Serial argumentation. I use this form of argumentation all the time. Um, the jazz example, in order to, jazz is best appreciated when it is played live. Um, when it is played live, you have a better sense of the music. Therefore, if you're a person who says you love the music, the best way to get that, the best sense of the music is to watch it being played live. Serial argumentation. I use this a lot. Um, converging arguments I also use all the time. Easy, 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 easy way of identifying. And this is the stuff that I like doing, right? Because now you'll be able to use these devices immediately, right? You immediately know, and you can be very technical in your analysis, when somebody says, well, Okay, I'm going to present the following four points on why we should rebuild the highways. First, we should da 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 da. Second, we should da 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 da. Third, we should da 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 da. Four, we should da da da. Five, we should da 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 da. All of those reasons lead us to the justification that we need to rebuild the highways. The one thing that needs to be done is the highways need to be rebuilt. Why is it that need to be rebuilt? Because we have a converging set of arguments sort of descending on this one point. Very, very effective if you know how to really do that well. You gotta be, you know, you gotta you have to be careful and you don't want it to be too repetitive, right? You can't have 19 ways converging. So then you mix and match, right? You use a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You guys get the idea. Okay, so that concludes that. What I'm gonna do in a little bit, because I'm running out of battery, what I'm gonna do in a little bit is uh, we're gonna look at the last page, the last two pages, and we're going to uh yeah, where did I put the uh, oh yeah, I have to print. Yeah, I have to print another one. Um, what we're going to do <laughs> one of these days. What I'm going to do is look at the uh, the JFK speech on the top of page ten. We're going to analyze it, map it out, and um, and make sense of it. It'll it'll be. I think it's going to be fun. So we'll look at the JFK speech and implement the devices that we used 
and I'm just going to do my own particular map. Your map is probably not going to look just like my map, but I think what would be cool is, I don't know how because it's not a class environment where we can exchange sort of the, our mappings, your mappings should be different, right? Interpretation is going to be different for members in the community, so your mapping might be different. So I'll demonstrate how I mapped it. Um, and you take it with a grain of salt. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, it doesn't really matter because there is no necessarily right or wrong answer. There are better or worse ways of mapping it. But I'm just going to present one way that I mapped it and you'll be able to see it and I'll flush it all out and hopefully it'll be all nice and pretty. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop the video now and then I'll come back uh, in a second.